Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and our topic this evening is how to believe so that you can receive. Hang on one second. I just want to make sure that this volume is all the way up. All oh, right. Sorry about that. So I'm going to just say a quick prayer before we get started. I see you guys jumping on. It's so great to see you here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to get started. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, that your word is truth. And I thank you, Lord, for all the viewers, Lord, that are watching this broadcast right now. And for those that will watch the replay or listen to the podcast or see this on YouTube. Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, again, that your word is truth. I pray that this word would just sink so deeply and penetrate every heart, Lord, that's listening, Lord, the hearts and minds, so that so that your people, Lord, can go forth and represent you well here on this earth. Lord, I thank you right now, and I pray that this word will be edifying, Lord, to the listener, to the viewer, and glorifying to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So if you struggle if you struggle with your faith to receive, right, to believe and then receive the things that you're praying for, I have good news for you. And I'm going to show you just how simple it really, really is tonight, okay? The key is, you know, I say according to God's will, right? You want to pray things according to God's will. Well, how do you know what God's will is? God's word is God's will. Right? A lot of times people say, oh, it is what it is. You know, if God wants this to happen, then it'll happen. No, right? God expects you to do the word and then he confirms his word with miracles, signs and wonders. I'll get more into that. So, okay. The thing is, is you don't want anything outside of God's will, do you? Because the thing is, is you can believe for things outside of God's will and it can still come to pass, Right? But you don't want things apart from God's will, do you? Right? No, you don't. Trust me, you don't. I know. I don't either, right? There were times I thought I did, right? Or that maybe what I wanted was God's will. But back then, I wasn't in God's word to know what his will is. So anyway, I don't want to confuse you. But here's the thing. You can believe for things and even, you know, you can believe for things that are outside of God's will. And you could end up getting those things, but it can really end up hurting you. Okay, but what am I talking about? I'm talking about self-fulfilling prophecies, right? Things like, well, let me just say this, because according to what you believe, really believe and then speak, you're going to see the manifestation of it. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the words that you speak come under the spiritual law that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Okay, let me say that again. The words that you speak, they come under the spiritual law that life and, of life and death being in the power of the tongue, right? God's word says it. And what you, what you believe and then speak, and I mean what you really believe in your heart, and then speak, that's what you're going to see the fruit of or the results of, okay? I'm going to get more into this. But I've heard people say that they were afraid that they were going to get a certain disease, right? And then they end up getting it. Or that I've even heard people say that um, or heard of people who have said things like um, oh, one in particular, and it just broke my heart, but a young person who had gotten a brand new car who said that they're going to end up killing themselves in that thing. And they did, right? So sad. And, um, oh, even somebody that is a good friend of our family, you know, um, had gotten a brand new dirt bike and <sighs> made the statement that he would probably end up killing himself on this thing. And it was just so heartbreaking. And he had an accident. And then a few days later, he passed away. This is many years ago. But anyway, self-fulfilling prophecies, things that you believe in your heart and then you speak. I'm talking about things you don't even want to see. Right? Like when people go, I'm telling you, this is what's going to happen. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that what you want to happen? You better watch your words. Watch your words. Because a lot of times people say things because they want to be right, but it can be detrimental. Even things that they speak over their kids. Like you better watch out. 
I don't even want to go there, but you get what I'm saying, right? Okay. Why does that happen? It's what I just said, because whatever you speak, you're giving life to. And here's a, just a few scriptures about the words you speak. Excuse me, I need some water. <clears throat> a few scriptures about the words that you speak. Proverbs 8, 18, 21, life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? Matthew 12, 37 says, by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned, right? Mark eleven twenty three. I love it. Truly, I say to you, whoever, and you guys know this, right? Truly, I say to you, Jesus said, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him, okay? So whatever, here's another thing, whatever is in your heart in abundance, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. Or whatever is in your heart the most, right, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. So you got to watch what you put into your heart, you know, in abundance, right? Why? Because Matthew 12, 34 says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, so whatever's in there, that's what's going to come out. So what's the best thing you could ever, ever do? The best thing you could ever, ever, ever do is learn the Word of God and get it rooted in you, right? And, I, you know, if you can listen, <clears throat> for example, say 30 minutes a day, just 30 minutes in the day, first thing in the morning, that's going to get your mind going in the right direction. And if you do it every day, it's going to get you rooted and grounded. You're going to be putting the word in your heart in abundance, right? And then when a life situation comes up, boom, that's what's going to come out of your mouth, not what the enemy would want to come out of your mouth, right? The last thing you want to do is agree with the devil that something that you don't want to see is going to come to pass. So the point is, when you put the word of God in your heart, you know, every day you're learning, you're growing. The word of God is incorruptible seed. And when you plant a seed in the ground, what happens, right? You plant good seed in the ground, it's going to grow. Same thing with the word of God. It's, it's a law. You plant that word in your heart and you understand it. That's what's going to end up growing out of you. That's what's going to end up coming out of you automatically when a life situation comes up. You know, when it looks like death, no, you turn around and speak life. Boy, I'm getting fired up. Woo, the word of God just fires me up. How about you? Mm, it just it just does. So, you know, exercise and nutrition are important, right? But the word of God is the most important. Because, you know, even the Bible says, right, it profits, um, that exercise, you know, profits little. But the word of God, fire, 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 I see you guys. Yeah, it's true, right? You guys are on fire too. Mm. The word of God lights a fire. It just does because it's truth. It's truth. Okay. So what I was saying, let me get back. <laughs> right? No, I can't. I can't contain myself. Exercise and nutrition are important, right? But you don't want to let anything in the natural be your God because there's limitations there, right? But there's no limit to our God. You know, doctors, listen, thank God for them. But there's a limit there. And when they say that there's nothing else they can do, you know something? I'm just being truthful. Every now and then, that's the best thing somebody could ever hear. Because now, I mean, I know that fear tends to come when that happens. But you get around a believer that knows the truth of God's word. And that's why I'm saying for you yourself, start putting that word in your heart every single day day. So that is what will come out. The word of God is truth. It is infallible. It is incorruptible seed and it will transform your life if you let it. I'm telling you. Okay. So I was saying there's no limit when it comes to our God. None, no limit. Jesus already paid the price, for example, for your healing, right? It's a done deal, but you still have to decide that it's true for you. Like in other words, it's true whether you believe it's true or whether you believe it isn't, it's true. It's like heaven and hell, it's real whether you believe it or not, right? How are you going to find out? <coughs> Excuse me. One second. I feel like my... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Keep going. I almost said dry throat. I'm not agreeing with that. No. 
Okay. Jesus already paid the price for your healing, but you have to still decide that it belongs to you. You have to get into agreement with the, what Jesus did for you. You've got to get into agreement with his word, with the word of truth. You know, if something happens to you, right, or you experience something and who could ever tell you that that's a lie, right? So what I'm saying is what Jesus went through at that whipping post, he received those stripes. That was for your healing. That was for my healing. It is done. It is done forever. Forever that price is paid, okay? But you have to decide to believe that it's true, okay? You've got to decide that you're victorious because Jesus is the victory that overcame the world, right? He overcame the world, the devil. He overcame, he overcame, and you overcome because he overcame, okay? Now, he also, his Holy Spirit lives in you now, right? Jesus is physically at the right hand of the Father, but his Holy Spirit lives in you and me right now, today, right now. Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ in you. The hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. You know, and everything that I just spoke about has to do with faith. Okay, faith. Faith in the dictionary. Okay, and I, I was like, oh, can, I need to break this down. Faith in the dictionary means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And the second meaning, it says strong, strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. So that would mean you believe in God because the word of God, you believe that it's truth without even having maybe proof in your own life that it's true, but you believe it. So that's faith, right? That's faith. Okay. Faith. Here's the bottom line. Faith is full confidence as if it's done, right? While there's no proof of the thing yet. That's what faith is. So faith also, it rests. Faith rests in the fact that something is a done deal before it sees the done deal, right? And real faith brings rest, rest. There's no striving. There's no, you know, going back and saying, it's not working. Well, maybe I missed it. You know what? Once you speak God's word, you stay on God's word like a pit bull that's not going to let go till it's just not going to let go. Not going to let go. You know, a while back I had cried out to to God and I said, "I want to have the faith of Jesus. Show me how to have the faith of Jesus." And he did. And the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you the Holy Spirit immediately immediately answered and said, "The law of gravity." And I was like, "What?" Huh? You know, I've got to keep things simple. And I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, but it bears repeating. This is the other thing. The word of God repeats itself and repeats itself and repeats itself. Why? Because, because he really wants you to get it right and understand it. So if you're going to do things for the Lord and you're going to, you're going to speak the word of God, you're going to repeat yourself a lot. Don't ever worry about that or people being upset with you because you repeat yourself. Okay. That's how, that's how learning happens. So anyway, the Holy Spirit said the law of gravity. And I was like, what? And the Lord showed me that the law of gravity works the same way for everybody all the time, no matter what. I mean, can God intercede with gravity? Sure, like with walking on the water. But what I'm saying is gravity, it's a law, okay? And then the Lord showed me someone like on a building, right? Say, this is a building, this is you. And if you step off, you're going down, right? It pulls. It's going to pull you down. Gravity is going to pull you down. So gravity is a law that God set in motion, not man. Gravity pulls automatically. Faith pulls automatically. Listen to what I'm saying here. This is so, so, this is what makes it so simple to understand. Gravity pulls. Faith pulls. Think about the woman with the issue of blood, right? I'll cover that in a minute. But healing is a spiritual law that God set in motion as soon as Jesus received those stripes. As soon as he took those stripes, right? 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, you were healed. Done deal, right? It's a done deal. But how do you access it? How do you access it? 
you've got to be be ready to believe before you pray, speak, command, or minister healing. You got to be ready to 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 have believed. Like you got to just know. And when you pray, right? Okay, Mark eleven twenty four says when you pray, and that also means if you're listen. How did Jesus uh, minister healing? He spoke. He commanded. Right. That's what you have to do. You've got to know. You've got to have faith. You've got to believe that as soon as you speak those words, the power of God is released. It's set in motion, and it's gonna hit. It's gonna. It's gonna. It's aimed right at the thing that you are aiming it to. Okay. Jesus said, when you pray, believe you have received and you will have what you prayed for. Believe you have received already. It's a done deal, right? Okay. So just like the woman with the issue of blood, her faith pulled the healing power out of Jesus and he never even touched her. He never even touched her. But here's the thing. She said within herself, I just know, okay, faith is knowing. It's it's she already believed she already believed that if she could just touch the hem of his garment boom it was a done deal she would be healed and it's and the bible says that immediately when she touched the hem of his garment immediately she felt healing in her body and then jesus said he felt power go out of him she literally her faith pulled power out of him right and and then he said to her your faith has made you well. Your faith. Faith in what? Faith in the fact that she had already believed that if she would just touch his garment, she would be well. That's why he said your faith has made you well. Okay. Faith knows. It knows. It knows beforehand that it's a done deal. Believed. Believe you have received that it was done. Right? Because if you received something, if you received past tense something, it's a done deal. So he says, believe that you've already received. And that's what that woman did. If I touch his garment, I know I'm healed. Like, I'll be healed. It's a done deal. She already believed. I know I'm really driving this home, but I hope this is really helpful and blessing you. So another thing, Jesus never, ever took credit, even for the works he did. He was the son of God. He said he was the son of God, right? He was the son of God. And he referred to himself as the son of man, but he plainly said he was the son of God. But we are also sons of God, daughters of God, right? Jesus never took credit for the work that he did. He said it was the Father in him that does the works, right? So if somebody said, how are you doing this? He said, it's not even me. It's the Father in me that does the works, right? He said, if you don't believe in me that I'm the Son of God, then at least believe for the sake of the works. Okay. Jesus, well, let me back up. Jesus never took credit for the work, and likewise, we never take credit for the work. We say Christ in us does the work. Like if someone want, don't, okay, I can't tell you what to do, but I don't ever want somebody, somebody to refer to me as a faith healer, okay? No, because I'm not the healer. Jesus is the healer. He works through me because he's in me, but it's his spirit, the Holy Spirit, that does the works. Christ in me does the works, right? Okay, so Jesus knew that whatever he spoke, whatever he spoke or commanded would be done. He knew that it was, the second he spoke, it was, it was a done deal. He already knew that, right? There was never a doubt. There was never a, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, Father, you know, what if it doesn't work? Never. We've got to get to that place as well. I haven't arrived, but I'm telling you, I'm going after it with everything I've got, getting better every day. And that's what, that pleases God, right? You've got to go after it. You've got to know. You've got to come to a place that when you speak, you know it's a done deal. When it's his word, you speak his word. He confirms his word, okay? So Jesus knew that whatever he spoke at any time, right, it was a done deal. There was never a what if, what if it doesn't work? Could you imagine at Lazarus's tomb, right? What if he doesn't rise? No, he never, it, Jesus had no lack in his mentality whatsoever. And that's why he said, it's, the Bible says, he marveled at their unbelief. He couldn't even believe that they didn't believe. And that's what we need to get to the point of. Oh, I love it, right? 
That would have been a lack mentality if he said, well, like, what if he never did that and we're not supposed to do that either, right? So we've got to get to that place that we know that when we speak or command, we minister healing, immediately we set the power of God whoosh, in motion and it will accomplish what it was set to do, okay? You have to believe, speak, not doubt it, and you will see it. That's the word of God. That's the word of God, right? And you could say, yeah, but, but that was Jesus, right? And you and I, you know, his ways are higher than our ways. No, that's Old Testament. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.16, you have the mind of Christ, okay? In 1 John 2.20, New Testament. Sorry, hang on. Mm. Excuse me. First June, John 2, 20 says you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things, right? Why? Because the one who lives in us knows all things. Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ in you mm. knows all things. Okay. We've got to really, really meditate on this truth. I'm telling you. This is so, so, so important and it's actually really simple because when you really understand that, you know, it's Christ in you, right? You're not, it's no longer you that lives, but Christ in you, right? You're just the vessel and it just makes everything so simple. You're representing Jesus to the world. You're acting on behalf of Jesus. You're, listen, he needs you and I on this earth to represent him, right? And that's what we're supposed to do. And we haven't really, I believe we just really haven't understood our role. And, you know, so many times we think that God is apart from us. We got our grain, you know, call and rent the heavens and all this stuff. And no, we don't. Christ lives in us. No, you don't. 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 Okay. You just need to represent him to the world. Okay. How do you do this? Number one, and I'm going to drive it again. Realize that Christ lives in you, okay? You have to decide, and I said this a minute ago, that it's no longer you that lives, but Christ lives in you, okay? Let him live through you. Let him live through you. That means that you need to die to self. Don't let the opinions of other people, right? Don't let the opinions of other people's or people or even your own emotions sabotage you. Don't let it happen, right? If they do, right, discouragement comes in for a little bit, just don't stay there. Don't stay there. Get up. Get up. Realize who lives in you. You know, I had something happen to me recently, and I just, I felt so, like, just attacked. Every great one, you know, every now and then, that thoughts, they just come. And I found myself, like, ah, frustrated. And I said something to my husband, and he goes, right away, he goes, don't agree with that. That's straight from the devil. Don't agree with that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, thank you. And that's why the body of Christ needs each other. So important. You don't want to agree with the enemy ever, ever. Okay. Okay. Number two, your faith. Okay. This, you guys, this is so important. Your faith is not in your own faith. I mean, for years, I kept thinking, oh, I got to, you know, muster up the faith to, you know, or somebody would say something. I was like, oh, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I have enough faith for that. Knock it off because it's not even your faith that you have to have faith in. This is so awesome. You don't have to try. You don't have to strive. Your job is to just simply speak and be a vessel filled with Christ, right? Christ in you. And this way you can release him to the world around you. When you speak, you're speaking on behalf of Jesus, okay? You're giving word, you're giving voice to his word. He confirms his word. The Holy Spirit in you does the work and will do the work, right? Whether it's speaking a word to someone, or whether it's a word of encouragement, whether it's a declaration, whether it's you're releasing, or whether it's laying hands on someone for healing, right? Or speaking healing. Jesus healed. Sometimes he didn't have people in front of him. He would just say, go, your servant is, is well. Your daughter is healed. The demons left your daughter, right? Your son will live. I mean, you know, it's the word of God. God confirms his word. Okay. And number three, you have to know that your spirit and when your spirit and God's spirit are joined together. First Corinthians six seventeen. he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Where you go, he goes. 
okay? He's the vine, you're the branch, but you're, you're he's in you, right? So you touch, it's him touching. You, but you have to speak the words and the Holy Spirit will confirm his word, okay? The word of God. So, oh my gosh, almost out of time. And then what I was just saying about, remember the Lord confirms his word with signs following. Mark 16, 20 says this. He confirms his word, not your word, not my word, not words of whoever, his word, the word of God. So guess what? You're going to have to know the word of God. So this is why I was saying, you know, as much as you can listen, even 30 minutes each day, you know, you've got to know his word so that you can go and represent him to the world around you. This brings God so much glory, glory. You know what? If you release healing to someone, boom, they get healed on the spot. God gets glory. Isn't that awesome? He's so pleased. We're literally doing what we were, you know, meant to do. And it doesn't mean that you have to be behind a pulpit or, you know, a preacher or have titles. I'm telling you, I'm so not into titles. You know, I have a few, but I call myself an ambassador of Christ. What's an ambassador of Christ? It's a representative. It's someone who is going to represent Jesus. That is what my heart is. So no matter what your, you know, your function is or whatever, you know, you do for a living, you can still manifest Christ everywhere you go. And that is what God wants us to do. That's what God wants you to do. Okay. And this is what we really have to understand, you know, that again, when you speak and you say it with authority, Jesus gave you authority over all the power of the enemy right? It's his authority, him through you, but you release it and just know it's going to be done because you're not the one doing it. It's the Holy Spirit in you. Okay. Okay. Again, you know, it's so important. Get your mind listening, get, get yourself listening to the word of God, at least 30 minutes, you know, in the morning, if you can do it, cause that'll get your mind going in the right direction. But if you can do it at night as well, before you go to bed, oh boy, the word will be percolating in your mind all night long. You're going to have peace. You're going to have so much better sleep, right? So that is how you believe so you can receive. I'm telling you, representing Jesus to the world, you'll bring glory to God. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. 1 John 4, 17, right? Where you go, he goes. When you lay hands, He's laying hands. When you speak, he's speaking. And the Holy Spirit's power is going forth. Now, for those of you who have never asked Jesus to come in and be the Lord of your life, let's do that right now. I don't want to, you know, leave you on the broadcast without this. And, and you know, make sure that you share this everywhere you can, you know, on social media. Let's advance the kingdom of God together. Together. Share this with everyone. If you got value from this, and how could you not? It's the word of truth, Right? Make sure that you share this. God is just wanting this to just to get out to the multitudes, to the masses. So repeat after me if you're not born again and mean it with your whole heart because God knows if you mean it, right? Okay, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And if you're born again, you're called a saint. I believe that you died on the cross and paid for my sins forever. And I believe that God the Father raised you on the third day. I know you are alive now and you live forever. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Change my life forever. Teach me your ways. And baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, Lord, let me be on fire for you. Lord, in your holy name I pray. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Welcome to the family of God. And now it's so important that you get into the word of God, start renewing your mind because that's how transformation will happen, right? You don't want to conform to the world's way of doing things, but as you renew your mind with God's word, put God's word, put that incorruptible seed into your heart, even just 30 minutes a day. You know, if you do that for four days straight, It'll get your mind going in the absolute right direction. It'll get your mind renewed. And I'm telling you, you need this because when life situations happen, 
You want nothing but the word coming forth. Not doubt, not unbelief. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue, your words. It's a spiritual law. So that is how you can believe, speak, and receive. Thank you for joining me on the broadcast. I will see you next time. Be sure to share it. God bless you. I love you in Jesus. And I'll see you again real soon. All right. Good night, everybody.